Now we've all been to malls and superstores and pushed around those shopping carts. It's so much fun pushing the cart and then standing on its edge just enjoying the ride. But you should know me by now. You should already know that I'm going to want to bring physics into this as well. So let's just get right into it. Now you've probably noticed the harder you push, the faster the cart accelerates. And this is the premise behind Newton's second law of motion, which tells us that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied to it and inversely proportional to its mass. In other words, the more force you apply to an object, the greater its acceleration will be. And the heavier an object is, the harder it is to accelerate. Now this relationship can be defined by the equation F equals to MA or force equals to mass into acceleration. Now this may seem really straightforward, but it has some really important implications for how things move and interact in the world around us. Let's look at some examples to help illustrate this concept. Imagine you're playing catch with a friend. If you throw a heavier ball with the same force as a lighter ball, the heavier ball will travel slower. And that's because the heavier ball has, wait for it, more mass. So you'll need more force to get it moving at the same rate as the lighter ball. Similarly, if you're pushing a shopping cart and you want to accelerate it and have it move faster, you need to apply more force. And you can do this either by pushing harder or by pushing for longer. But let's back up a bit. On a larger scale, this principle explains why it takes a lot more force to accelerate larger objects such as trains or maybe a rocket than it does to accelerate smaller objects like a car or a shopping cart. Now there's one more piece in the puzzle that you have to consider the direction of the force. Newton's second law also tells us that the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the net force applied on the object. Now for example, let's say you're pushing a box across a flat surface with a force of 10 newtons to the right. And there's a frictional force of five newtons pushing to the left. The net force on the box will be five newtons to the right which means the box will accelerate to the right with an acceleration that's proportional to the net force, so it increases as the net force increases, or inversely proportional to the mass, so it decreases as the mass increases. In the same manner, weight pulls you downwards because weight is a measure of how strongly gravity is pulling on an object. We can calculate weight using the formula W equals to mg where W is weight, M is mass, and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, since the acceleration produced due to gravity is usually a constant, 9.81 meters per second square, the force of gravity, that is, the weight, is determined by the mass of an object. The more mass an object has, the stronger the force of gravity that's acting on it. And it's because of this force on the object that the resultant acceleration due to gravity will always be 9.81 meters per second square for an object in free fall. Interestingly, if there were no air resistance, an object with a mass of 10 kg would accelerate downwards at the same rate as an object with a mass of 1 kg, that is 9.81 meters per second square. This is something that the first astronauts to the moon actually tested and found to be true. But why is it that these objects with different masses are accelerating at the same rate? An object with a mass of 10 kg will be pulled downwards by gravity with a force of 98.1 newtons, while the object with a mass of 1 kg will be pulled downwards with a force of 9.81 newtons. And this is because both numbers, the force and mass, are directly proportional to each other. And the constant between them is the acceleration due to gravity, which will always be 9.81 meters per second square, at least for objects in free fall on Earth. Let's summarize. Newton's second law of motion 
tells us three things. First, it tells us that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied to it and inversely proportional to its mass. This explains why heavier objects are harder to get moving and why it takes more force to accelerate them. Second, it also tells us that the direction of acceleration is the same as the direction of the net force applied to the object. Lastly, we also know that the force of gravity acts depending on the object's mass, where more massive objects are pulled with a greater force. And this proportionality is the reason the acceleration produced is always 9.81 meters per second square.